Okay, so at this point I went in, I blended a little bit more, um, and one thing I've also decided to do is I'm taking like my really thin um, angle brush that I have, and I'm actually going in with black, and I'm going to draw like a really thin um, black line in here, just because I feel like I could have a little bit more definition, um, just because I feel like every time I do my makeup, no matter what, um, it just ends up like a smoky eye, so I'm trying to make it um, a little bit less like a smoky eye, and a little bit more... Um, like the like classic mod look um so that's just giving like, a little bit more definition it's tricky to see because the green um is pretty dark that i already put down but this just gives it like a little bit more of a pop and again i'm just kind of letting it wing out um and then another thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and put on my eyeliner now so again um like i talked about in the last video i usually just use like um a black eyeshadow as my eyeliner um just because it's easier for me just because I'm usually like honestly just because I'm usually doing my makeup on the train <laughs> so it's a little bit easier um than carrying around like a liquid or a cream but um I also just feel like it can be like a little bit more forgiving um but I will say sometimes if you're trying to get a really crisp line it can be a little trickier so I do occasionally use it with um like a mixing medium um just so that I can get like a crisper line and it becomes a little bit more like a liquid at that point um, but most of the time I feel like if you have like a pigmented enough, um, black shadow and you're using like a dense enough brush, um, you won't get a lot of fallout and it will give you, um, as much definition as you would get from like a typical kind of liner. Um, really the only kind of liner I don't like to use is a pencil liner unless it's like really, really creamy. I think pencils on yourself aren't that hard to use, um, but trying to use a pencil on someone else can get really really tricky um so i'm just gonna do like a very like graphic bold liner um so pretty similar to like what we did in the 50s it's not gonna necessarily be like a defined cat eye but it is gonna meet um the end of this so it's sort of like a cat eye but um it's meeting the rest of your eyeshadow more than when we did um the cat eye in the 1950s look if that makes sense um but the first thing i'm doing is just going in um and trying to lay down baseline to help give definition and again we're gonna do like lashes and stuff too so if it's a little weird in any places um lashes will usually cover everything up and then again um for your winged liner if you just have your eye open but this it's a little easier because we already have so much other makeup on and um, to kind of see where this line should be but um if you have your eye open it's a lot easier to figure out um where this cat eye uh, should kind of be and where it should line up um so there's a bunch of different ways you really could do 60s makeup um if you're going more for like the 60s like punk look you would certainly wear like a lot of like graphic eye makeup and a lot of graphic liner um not everybody looks like this every single day but i do feel like um a lot of times when we're doing makeup for stage you do get like the very iconic looks that people want to see um just like you'll see like when we do the 70s side i'm gonna do like powder blue eyeshadow was everybody wearing it no but when most people think of like makeup in the 1970s that's what they think of and i think that like with the 60s a lot of people think about um this sort of like mod really like graphic eye makeup um so that's kind of why um that's what we're going with and plus i just want to kind of show you all um uh, as many different like i guess like techniques and eye makeup things as you can because i think that's something that um you don't always get a lot in theater school but then people like expect you to be able to do it for shows and know it um so i think it's nice to kind of like expose you to that when i can um and so now i'm just kind of like filling in the winged part and then just kind of like darkening where um what i did in my crease meets with uh, my liner so kind of different from like a lot of the other makeup we're doing it's dark like all the way in my crease to kind of define it um most of the time i like to tell people just for like regular makeup i kind of stop that here and like really lightly blend it in there i don't usually keep it that dark um for most basic beauty makeup or for my day-to-day -day life um but for something like this it is really important to have um that kind of like intense definition you just want to make sure that you're never making somebody's like inner corner too dark because if you do that and um, a lot of times that just makes people look tired and especially if they're on stage with the way that the lights might hit them it might create like some weird shadows um so you just want to be really careful with that kind of stuff um so once you feel like you kind of have your liner um where you want it to be you can go in and work on trying to like clean it up a little bit now um because this probably extends out like a little bit farther than what I would want um especially because I don't have um 
my eyes are like a little bit more rounded if somebody had like an almond eye shape this might follow the shape of their eye a little bit more but my eyes are not shaped like that um so I can try to like force it to be like that and with lashes and on stage people probably wouldn't notice that my eyes aren't really that shape um but I'm gonna try to like calm it down a little bit so it's not so intensely outside of like what my actual eye shape is um and to do that I'm just gonna take the same kind of like light color I was using before um, underneath my eyebrow and I'm gonna go and try to just like smooth that out a little bit um, and again this green doesn't have as bad a fallout um, as blue would I feel like I don't know what it is about blue eyeshadow I think it's just because it's really similar to like the colors that are in our under eye circles but when you get fallout right there it's just like horrendous um, but this really isn't too bad there's a little bit on me um, but it's nothing that I feel like a little bit of just like going back in with like highlighter like this um, can't fix um, and again I'm just kind of working to smooth this out but I'm not um, trying to lose like that really intense shape that I have I want that to stay like that um, and then this is usually the point where I'm like oh if I have to go in and touch any of that color up I will um, so we'll come back in um, with the green and do that and then this is usually when I try to make um, the inner corner just a little bit brighter um, just kind of help because again um, on most people that's going to be really really flattering um, just to have a lot of brightness right there if you put highlight in the wrong places sometimes that can almost make people look like they have like eye bags and stuff um, but usually um, in the inner corner that's going to be a really good place to do it um, so I'm just going to take a little bit of the green and if I could remember how to open my palette there we go um, and then really careful because you put in so much detail um, you can kind of pat that in and I find that like especially with eyeliner it can be really hard um, to get it even so I feel like when I go back in with that that always kind of helps to like um, smooth out any weird lines I might get um, just because I feel like that definitely happens to, to everybody um, and then at this point I want to get any other like fallout that might be on my face off um, so I usually just take a really big brush and wipe that away and I really do find that like unless it's like blue or like glitter or something um, most of the time it comes off when I do that um, so it's not anything to be too worried about I think a lot of people get really worried about like fallout um, but it's really not that bad um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is put on eyebrows um, and mascara um, we'll do lashes on both sides last and then we will do the 70s eye so I'm gonna just do my eyebrows really quick um, for eyebrows in the 1960s and pretty much in the 1970s, both shapes were a lot more natural. Um, so it wasn't anything where you really have to like try to get like a very specific shape. At this point, I would just keep somebody's eyebrows um, more into the natural world. I think it's when we get back into like the 80s and probably like part of the 70s too, where people started to have like a little bit of like a larger um, kind of like an eyebrow going on and people liked like a fuller brow, um, but there's none of the like very intense like small tiny brows or anything like that so I would just have somebody for stage um, just fill in their eyebrows as they normally would um, so I'm going to do that and put on some mascara and then we're going to start on our 1970s side <laughs> 